The Australian Open finally done for 2023. We have some massive changes in the rankings this week, a massive change at the top of the men's rankings, and of course some changes to the women's rankings as well. But we're gonna start with the past results because we had two big tournaments, WTA and ATP, Australian Open winners. Let's go check out who won. Starting with the ladies champion at the Australian Open, and it was, of course, Arena Sabalenka winning in three sets, very close match against Rabakina, 4-6, 6-3, 6-4, to lift her first Grand Slam trophy. And on the men's side of things, of course, Novak Djokovic winning his 22nd slam, defeating Stefano Tsitsipas, 6-3, 7-6, 7-6, and also his 10th Australian Open, and all of those players got a boost in the rankings. Let's start with the WTA rankings now because we had some massive changes. Fiontek stayed at number one, but we had a change at number two with Sabalenka getting back to number two after winning the Australian Open. She's gone three spots up, pushing down Jabert at number three, Pagula down to number four, and Garcia goes down to number five. So Sabalenka closing the gap on Sviontek. We also had a change in the middle with Goff going up to number six and Zachary getting pushed down to number seven. Kazakina stays at number eight. And Kudamatova, she drops out of the top 10, making way for Bencic, who goes up one spot to number nine. And Alina Rabakina, 15 spots higher than last week, finally getting into the top 10, a career high for her at number 10 after making the final of the Australian Open. Having a look at the race of the finals now, it's the first time we actually get to look at the race of the finals because we've got some massive points now, and this is definitely gonna change over the next few months. But at number one, Sabalenka, after winning the Australian Open and Adelaide, she starts the season off on fire. Rebecca is number two after making the Australian Open final. Azarenka at three, Lynette at four, after they both got a lot of points for making the semi-finals of Australia. Pagula comes in at number five, Benchage at six, Goff at six, Seven, Vekic at eight, Ostapenko at nine, and Pliskova rounds out the top 10 for the WTA Finals race. This, of course, will look so different month to month, so we'll keep an update on this. Jumping over the men's ranking now, and we've got a big change at the top with Novak Djokovic going up four spots to world number one again, pushing Alcaraz down to number two, who, of course, didn't play the Australian Open. So number one again, Novak Djokovic, four spots higher than last week. Sizibas goes up one spot to number three, which equals his career high after making the final of the Australian Open, pushing Rude down to number four. Rublev goes up to number five, and Rafa, he's dropped from number two down to number six after failing to defend his title at the Australian Open this year. Oje Eliasim stays at number seven, and another change with Medvedev dropping out of the top 10, four spots lower than last week, allowing Fritz to go up to number eight, Runa to go up to number 9, which is a career high for him, and her catch to go up to number 10 to round out the top 10 rankings after the Australian Open. Let's have a look at the ATB Finals race now, and very similar to the women's side, those who did well in Australia did very well on this list. Djokovic, he's at number 1, and Sidney Pass at number 2. Hashinov at number 3, with Paul at number 4. Both those guys doing well in Australia, making the semi-finals. Shelton, he comes in at number 5 in the race to the finals, with Korda at number 6. Lehechka at number 7, Nori at number 8, Fritz at number 9, and Rublev rounds out the top 10. But as I said, this is very, very early on. Don't expect a lot of these names to stick around in the top 10 for very long. There's a lot of other players that are trying to knock on the door and get to that finals top 8. So there it is. After the Australian Open, the rankings are looking interesting. And now we can start talking about the finals race. Of course, a lot of the names in the finals race are probably not going to be there come November. But... It's good to get that underway and start looking at some of the points as well. Let me know down in the comments below. What's the biggest shock for you? Is, is it the Rafa's maybe dropped down or maybe Medvedev out of the top 10? Or are you shocked about the women's side of things? That some players maybe aren't as close as Sviontek after the first month. Remember, Sviontek's got a lot of points to defend over the next couple of months. So let's see if she can hang on to that top spot because Sabalenka's coming for her. But it's a hell of a tournament. The Australian Open, it's over for another year. And some big changes in the rankings this week.